Hi friends, I'm finally back with my fancy new microphone that has taken, I don't know, a month, maybe more. Um, and there's a story to that, but I'll tell that in a different video. I'll do an update. I'm just getting back in the saddle. I've, I've made a few videos out walking Ruby in nature and um, just reminiscing on the past, but I've, um, I've put, I, I just, I realized how bad quality the audio has been since I got my new uh, 4K camera, but the microphone was terrible. So thanks to those who partly sponsored this, Pammy, Sue and Arthur, and uh, I'm still about 60, 70 short. So if anybody else wants to put their name to the sponsorship of the audio, uh, uh, the GoFundMe link will be in the description. So here we go. Um, the best way I know how to get back in the saddle is through the word. And so we'll go straight to Revelation, still the book of Revelation, which I'm reading both in the messenger translation because it's accessible, but I'm also double checking it by doing a reading from the King James Bible as well. And then I'll play some music, I think towards the end. I personally find um, music a beautiful way to just enter into the presence of God. Um, you know, it's used for evil for so much for mind control and uh, control of the masses and propaganda and, you know, the things I idolized, you know, as a child, music and, and uh, movies. Um, I had no idea that they were, oh, and then Ruby wants to go out the door. So here we go. Ruby, can you sit down, sweetheart? It's nearly walk time. Right, let's just do this and, and we'll hope that Ruby doesn't misbehave. <clears throat> so share screen. Sorry for the long absence. To those who follow me, um, I'm sorry for the long absence. This is my beautiful children. Look, that's my daughter, my beautiful Gabriella. This is my youngest who's starting a family and launched out to independence. It's my beautiful granddaughter. This this is quite old. This is when he when this one graduated. Look at that. And this is my naughty grandson. And there's another grandchild on the way. And this my beautiful Joshua, the one that I was he was six when I split with his father, and he took on the role of man of the house from six years old. Um I, I feel badly for the burden that it might have been on him. He I remember I lived six miles from the children's school. They were in a homeschooling kind of a co-op, six miles from our country home in Ravensdale. Well, it was a house, a detached house with some land and horses and so on. Um, and my Jeep broke down, the battery was flat. And I, my ex-husband had gone back to England and I was just overwhelmed and I just burst into tears. And this little lad at six, he had spotted some builders working next door and he went out in his school uniform at six and came back while I was sitting at the kitchen table crying with frustration. He came back and said, mummy, mummy, there's men with jacks. <laughs> and I went out and sure enough, he, he trotted off to the builders and said, my mummy's Jeep won't start. Will you come and start my mummy's Jeep? And they had leads, jump leads. That's what they call jump leads. And he, He'd gone, he did things like fix the central heating. We moved back to Old Castle to an old cottage and the heating was funky. And Josh would go out to the boiler house at seven and fiddle with the knobs and do things and the heating would work again. So this is my beloved family thus far and there's one on the way. So I love them. Right, so let's just, you know me, I never get straight to the point. Oh, uh, that's Facebook. We can go out of there. Um, I had all the tabs open. Where have they gone? That's that. Right, let's start with the word. I know in traditional church services, you start with the praise and worship and it helps you enter in. And that was true in battles in the Old Testament. Do you know, when they went to war, the praise and worship... T I'm going to start with the music for that reason, actually, because in wartime, in the Old Testament... The praise and worship people would lead the battle. They would go out on the front line and they would sing and dance and play tambourines. Um, 
and then and then the soldiers would take over you know quite amazing so let's just do this let's just listen to some you can skip forward if you just want to get to the meat of the word but let's just listen to this this is talk new york Oh no, how did that happen? Go rub on the guitar. I'm 
the link into that I'll, the link to that in the description is kind of prophetic singing this guy is called nate cassis and originally he he wanted to be a dancer and he was he was a backing dancer for, for beyonce and he kind of made it in that field and then he got called into uh not the sort of um music industry but to use his talents for the kingdom of god um and so he switched primarily to singing, praise and worship, directing, choreographing, empowering. Um, and I'm talking quietly again, so I hope this microphone's doing its job. Right, so this is Talk New York, and that's Pastor Nate. Uh, let's go here first to the message translation, Revelation 15. Father God, I just pray belatedly, put the armor of God on, the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, that guards my mind, our minds, which need guarding in these times. The breastplate of righteousness, which guards our hearts. Let us not um, let the heart deceive. Uh, the belt of truth girt around our loins. And um, we especially take up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. There's plenty of those out. And the sword of the spirit, which is every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that's why I read the word and share it with you. I wish I could do this daily. I, I always aspire to do that. Uh, just a good way to start the day. And um, the shoes, I always think of them as my dancing shoes, shod, ready to go forth with the gospel of peace. Now I'm just going to let Ruby out because she's like, okay, now mom, now mom, I need to go outside. Okay, just a sec. Oh, that was beautiful. That was so lovely. I've got to get used to this mic, how far it picks up and how good things are. Give me some feedback in the comments, guys. Um, right, Revelation 15, the song of Moses, the song of the Lamb. Wow, this might be a long one. I saw another sign in heaven, huge and breathtaking. Yeah, open up the word to us, Holy Spirit, and let it make, let it, 
let it minister. And for those who don't know Jesus yet, just ask him. It's not a, a ritual. He meets you where you are. And it's not enough just to meet him when his disciples were panicking, when he was going to leave them. He said, don't worry, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory until he comes again, you know. And that's what makes sense of the scriptures. Otherwise, it's just a historical book that's hard to understand for some, many, me too. Okay, I put it up for us, Holy Spirit, I pray. Yeah, I saw another sign in heaven, huge and breathtaking. Seven angels with seven disasters. These are the days we're living in, guys, isn't it? There's no way to dress it up. We're living in some difficult times. The wrap-up of God's wrath. I saw something like a sea made of glass. The glass all shot through with fire, carrying harps of God, triumphant over the beast, its image and the number of its name. The saved ones stood on the sea of glass. They sang the song of Moses, servant of God. They sang the song of the Lamb. Mighty you, acts and marvellous. Mighty your acts and marvellous. This will be better in the King James. The King James is more poetic. Mighty your acts and marvellous, O God, the sovereign strong. Righteous your ways and true. King of the nations, who can fail to fear you, God? Give glory to your name. Because you and you only are holy. All nations will come and worship you because they see your judgments are right. Then I saw the doors of the temple, the tent of witness in heaven, open wide. The seven angels carrying the seven disasters came out of the temple. They were dressed in clean, bright linen and wore gold vests. One of the four animals handed the seven angels seven golden bowls, brimming with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. Smoke from God's glory and power poured out of the temple. No one was permitted to enter the temple until the seven disasters of the seven angels were finished. And um, I know this can be scary, but the world is scarier. The world as it is in the days of Noah, as it is even now, with everything that's happening, um, is is worthy of the wrath of God. It is. It really is. I, I, it's bad enough that some, I'm not getting on hobby horses here, but it's bad enough that something like 68 million babies have been murdered in the womb in America. 300 and something million babies were murdered during the Chinese one child per family uh, rule, you know, forced abortions, family members turning each other in, neighbors, everybody turning each other in, women being forcibly held down and babies ripped out of their wombs, you know. Uh, I don't need to list for you the darkness that's going on in the world at the moment. I think everybody, even those that were averse to conspiracy theories or religion even, are aware that we're living in very dark times. So I'll read this in the King James as well. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. See, I don't know why the myth, the, the message translation comes in for such flack, because most of the time it's pretty close. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, 666, and over the number of his name, yep, 666, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. And I'll just say briefly, I've said it on Facebook, follow me on Facebook, even though I know it's, you know, I lost two of them, two Facebook profiles, my really huge one, and 10, 12 years of disclosures in Messenger there. 
Um, but I still post there. And I talked about a lad, a teenager that was kidnapped a couple of years ago and uh, tortured for about three days in a flat in Ireland. And one of the tortures was to brand his forehead with the number 666. It was ritual abuse. There's no doubt about it. Um, and by the grace of God, the stupid trio that were torturing him and uh, horrifically, the branding was just the least of it. But they stupidly posted on, I think, Snapchat. And some friends of the teenager saw it and were able to track the location by the boy's phone. And somebody very close to me was his support person in a court case, which rarely, but did end up in the jailing of all three. Uh, but and a very pertinent question somebody asked me was, was it reported in the media? I don't recall, I don't. And it only happened half an hour's drive away from me. Um, I got daily updates from the trials and it was a huge relief that the perpetrators were jailed. Uh, but that lad has to live with that the rest of his life. I've met him many times and he wears a fringe to cover the branding, you know? And the, scar, the scars from the other torture will probably last a lifetime. So this stuff is real. This is not just um, conspiracy theories. <clears throat> and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvellous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are there thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen, having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels golden vials full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. He won't allow the sin that's, the sin that's rampant in the world and has, you know, there's always been sin it's not forever, it's not forever. This, th th there will be judgment, there will be judgment. And, yeah. and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So we'll leave it there, um, stop share. And I'll, I'll try and, I'm, I'm gonna get back on and please give me feedback if the audio is worth the 300 and something that the professional mic and mixer and all the rest of it um, cost. Um, and I'll do an update and I'll, I'll do a ramble and tell you how I am. And I pray that you're okay because I know that um, unless you are in La La Land, you are likely experiencing you know i've been fretting about certain logistics that need i need to make happen in my life and then i just briefly clicked on something it's like oh yeah there's been a warning of nuclear war <laughs> it's like, uh, you have to find a balance between um you know there are some that are just yearning to go home to jesus because it's so painful here there are others that are doom and gloom imminent war um, hellfire and brimstone and there are some that are absolutely ostrich head in the sand um, you know as in the days of Noah acting as if everything's hunky-dory and fine and just not not engaging with reality so look god bless and I'll be back soon please check the links in the description if you can support me please do